Welcome everyone to Monday Morning Morons for October 29th, 2018. I apologize for no video last week. I spent the weekend writing, wood carving, and of course a little spellcasting practice which somebody interrupted yet again. I swear I can sit around all day doing nothing and Bob won't bother me at all. But the second I start practicing... <sighs> anyway, the good news is Bob can talk again. A little happy accident, I suppose. The bad news is Bob can talk again and insists upon doing so quite frequently. <laughs> Shut up, Bob. We're recording. This week, let's begin with some good old-fashioned bullshit. Cornell professor hashes misogyny and empathy. It was the empathy that caught my attention. Having watched, read, and listened to these clowns for quite some time now, I'm always suspicious when they make up a new word, especially when all those new words just happen to be gendered for some reason. Cornell University assistant professor Kate Main will give a lecture titled On Empathy and Misogyny as part of the UB Gender Institute's year-long lecture series on misogyny. A whole year dedicated to lecturing about misogyny, huh? I wonder, Buffalo, are you by any chance following this up with a year-long lecture on misandry, or are we still pretending that's not a thing? Within a patriarchal order, women are, in effect, born into an unofficial service industry, Mann argued in a 2016 op-ed for Boston Review. And you stumbled at the first hurdle. When you make an argument, first you start with a solid foundation, some known or provable fact as a premise then expound or extrapolate from there with some logical conclusion resulting from that premise. This is not a fact. So your subsequent argument is not resting on a solid foundation. It's resting on a pile of bullshit. Because of women's service position, see, you're building upon that as though we should just accept it. Well, we don't. Their subordination often has a masked quality about it, it is supposed to look amicable and seamless rather than coerced. Service with a smile, not a grimace, is the watchword. Wrong. Bad. Yeah, I really don't think I even need to say anything else here. You've just described a fairy tale, not reality. So I think it's enough to just say wrong and move on. She calls misogyny the law enforcement branch of a patriarchal order in her essay. Ooh, patriarchal order. Sounds ominous. <laughs> Backing up bullshit with a fairy tale. About what I'd expect from you boneheads. The Cornell University professor has also coined the term empathy. Ah, good. Finally, the whole reason I even bothered to read this. What is empathy? Empathy refers to how we have been acculturated in our society to sympathize with powerful men even those who have been reported for harmful or criminal behavior, UB Gender Institute Director Carrie Brayman explained in a UB News release. Such identification with the victimizer risks erasing the actual victim. Uh, one more time? Empathy refers to how we have been acculturated in our society to sympathize with powerful men. We have? Well, that's fucking news to me. I didn't see a whole lot of sympathy for Harvey Weinstein. I didn't see a whole lot of sympathy for Bill Cosby. Haven't seen a fucking bit of sympathy for Trump. Are you sure you know what that word means? Mann penned a September 26th op-ed in New York Times in which she addressed empathy as it pertained to then Supreme Court Justice nominee Brett Kavanaugh. What the Kavanaugh case has revealed this week is that empathy can, at its most extreme, become full-blown gendered sociopathy a pathological moral tendency to feel sorry exclusively for the alleged male perpetrator, she wrote. Oh, Brett Kavanaugh shit. I should have guessed. Look, lady, I think you're mixing up two very different words here. It wasn't sympathy for Kavanaugh. It was empathy. Very different thing. We empathize with him because we could quite easily see ourselves facing a similar situation if you delusional psychos aren't stopped. I know you're one of those believe-all-women fruitcakes that are still totally convinced that Christine Ford was telling the truth, but, like it or not, she did not prove her case. 
I'm not going to argue whether she was lying or not. Maybe she was, maybe she wasn't. I have no way of knowing for sure one way or the other. What I am going to argue is that she had nothing but an accusation. Nothing. No hard evidence to back her up. No way she could have, really, considering she waited 30 years to even make the accusation. If there ever was any physical evidence, it's long gone by now. She had no corroborating witnesses. None. Some people swearing that she told them a story three, four, six years ago doesn't prove the story was true. They weren't there. They have nothing to add to the conversation except she told me about it. Well, whoopity doo da that means nothing. All of the people she claims were there do not know anything about the incident, plus none of them even recall the gathering she mentions ever happening at all. So in the end, as I said, like it or not, she proved nothing. Not one fucking thing except that she's a terrible actress. Her little look at me all pretty demure and unassuming act in front of the Senate was nauseating to see and totally unbelievable. But that's neither here nor there. What she said is what matters, and what she said was, I accuse him. Period. That's it. Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but we stopped blindly believing accusations in 1693 when 14 women and 5 men were executed because of nothing more than accusations. You might recall hearing that story, kind of famous, called the Salem Witch Trials. We empathized with Kavanaugh, not for his sake, but for ours. If you are allowed to brand him an attempted rapist and sexual abuser with absolutely nothing but an accusation, then you can do it to any of us at any time. If you get away with that, justice is dead. That is more important than Ford, Kavanaugh, me, you, or any other delusional shitballs ranting and raving about believe women. All right, Bob, what's next? Here's how many times Trump attacked pipe bomb targets. Ah, yes. The big story of the week. Mail bombs. Words matter. And here's one way to gauge their impact. This week, 12 suspicious packages were delivered to CNN and to prominent Democrats and Trump critics, including former President Barack Obama, the Clintons, former Vice President Joe Biden, Senator Cory Booker, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper, former Attorney General Eric Holder, though Holder's package was sent to Congressman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who was listed as the return address, billionaire philanthropist George Soros, and actor Robert De Niro. What do the targets have in common? They've all been targeted by President Donald Trump and made into boogeymen for the far right, often on Fox News by opinion anchors like Sean Hannity. Indeed, words matter. So you all go on a rant and continue your partisan claims that all this is Trump's fault because he said some bad words. But let me just take a tiny little moment to remind you of a couple of things. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? Well, I'd like to punch him in the face. That you cannot be civil with a political party that wants to destroy what you stand for, what you care about. If you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome. This is the language of the left right now. This is the kind of rhetoric you folks have been using since 2015. This is the message you have been putting out there. And this is just a tiny little sample of it. I'm sure if I had the time or cared to, I could find plenty more examples of the wonderfully peaceful message you ass clowns have been peddling, but I really don't think I need any more to make my point. While you are all sitting there blaming Trump and Trump alone for this so-called hate speech and violent rhetoric inciting acts of violence, you folks are right out there on the front line saying the same kind of shit and worse. 
So while I do not support or condone mailing bombs to anyone to make a political point, which is pretty fucked up and really, really counterproductive anyway, I'm not going to sit back and be lectured by a bunch of morally bankrupt fuckheads who just can't seem to remember when they do exactly the same thing that they are whining about others doing. Further, lock her up, which is one of the chants you ass clowns are so butthurt about, is not even in the same ballpark as this kind of shit. If you want to bemoan violent rhetoric as hate speech and inciting violence, fine. But let's not pretend it's only coming from Trump and his supporters. The left hit rock bottom and kept right on digging. So until you're ready to condemn the bullshit on all sides, save your moral lectures. Speaking of moral lectures, what's in the toxic masculinity bag this week, Bob? Toddler was still breathing when grandmother put her in oven, coroner's report. A 20-month-old girl found stabbed and burned inside an oven at a home in Mississippi last week was still alive when her grandmother allegedly stuck her inside, an autopsy report revealed. Royalty Marie Floyd died from sharp stab wounds and inhaling the heated air in the oven, according to the coroner's report obtained by Boulevard Commercial. The grandmother, identified as 48-year-old Carolyn Jones, was charged October 16th with first-degree murder and held on $500,000 bail, the paper reported. At the time, it was unclear to investigators what led to the toddler's death. Boulevard County Sheriff Kevin Williams said Jones' brother found the body the night of October 15th and called police in Shaw, a town of about 2,000 people approximately 100 miles northwest of Jackson. This is one of the most horrible things I've seen in doing law enforcement, Williams, with 26 years on the job, said of the killing. The hardest part is to see a child victim. The child was found inside a beige frame house in the north end of Shaw. Police tape still surrounded part of the house the morning of October 16th, while a stroller, high chair, and trash barrels of toys, including a scooter, sat near the curb outside the house. Williams said the toys had belonged to the child. Officials said Floyd lived in the home with Jones, while the toddler's mother, Veronica Shante Jones, lived elsewhere. Royalty Marie Floyd was the best thing that ever happened to me, Veronica Jones wrote on Facebook, according to the New York Post. She's my one and only daughter, my first love, the hardest thing that I ever had to go through in my life. My heart has been ripped from my chest. Uh, yeah, um, let's see. I mean, there's no man in the story here for me to blame, so, uh... Oh! You're right! There is! Her brother! Of course! It was all his fault! After all, he found the body and then notified the patriarchy... Right, police, who are, of course, the patriarchy's enforcers. Why would he do that if he killed her? Oh, Bob! You poor, simple-minded fool. It's so obvious. He stabbed the child, stuffed her in a hot oven, then called the police, all so they'd blame her. Clearly, the person who did such a thing to an innocent child is a monster. And thanks to feminism, we know that women simply cannot be monsters. Only men. So clearly, this was all one big setup by her brother, probably because she was asking for equal rights. Shut up, Bob. All in a grand conspiracy to oppress her free will and take away her right to have an abortion. Well, no, she wasn't the mother, but she was the grandmother. Clearly, she missed her opportunity earlier to abort her own daughter, so she's making up for it by aborting her daughter's baby. Post-birth. Yeah, that went to a really weird place, didn't it? Well, in any case, we know it was her brother's fault, and she didn't do nothing. Now then, get us out of here with a laugh. New Hampshire police seek man who doused cruiser with maple syrup. New Hampshire cops recently found themselves in a sticky situation. An unidentified man was seen in surveillance footage wasting a perfectly good bottle of maple syrup by pouring it all over a police cruiser. The Ringe Police Department released video showing a man wearing a blue shirt, dark pants, and a dark baseball hat dousing the sweet treat over a parked police cruiser. Hmm. New Hampshire. Maple syrup. That doesn't... This means war, Canada! <laughs>
That's it for this week, folks. Remember the social justice mantra, women are victims, men are oppressors, and feminism is just about equality. I'll see you all next time.